we're in a political election year, which is crazy. Um, uh, I mean, what is this? Is uh, this is cra it's a crazy year? What's the net rest of the year going to be? And the news on this Corona is changing all the time. So we're reopened our office. We're here in staggered shifts. We're wearing masks. We're doing our social distancing. Uh, but it is certainly a uh, uh, an interesting time. I'm doing a trip with my family and my parents. We're driving, not staying in any hotels, doing anything like that. Um, we're simply um, we are simply uh, trying not to touch anything. It's weird to go on vacations and trips this summer. This would be a time of the year I would look forward to. Um, one of the other things um, that uh, hit the news really hard this week is a um, is an experience with uh, another lawyer, Mark McCloskey and his wife, uh, brandishing weapons and 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 threatening. A, pro, a Black Lives Matter protest that was going through their neighborhood. Uh, there has been a lot, you know, there, the memes on this are crazy on social media, as well as the attention. And I understand Mr. McCloskey is on Anderson Cooper and is on Fox News and doing all these things. And he is certainly taking this and running with it um, and, uh, and getting as much press as as uh, as I guess he can on it I'm not saying it was planned or anything but you know one of the theories on something like this is that if you get in the press for something embarrassing to you or your prof or your or your business you shorten the time window in which it is in the news by just kind of you know maybe making a couple comments and then kind of being done with it that is not the case with uh, Mr. McCloskey, he is uh, certainly extending the window of time uh, uh, of uh, the exposure that this story has gotten, and uh, and that's certainly his druthers, uh, his certainly his choice. So now the the questions I get from that though is because I've talked about these protests and the rights and people's civil rights on these Black Lives Matter protests. You know, his point I think is that this was a private subdivision. It's not public, and people broke down a gate and went through it. Um, I don't know if that's, but brandishing a, a, a AR-15 and having your wife on the trigger of a, of a handgun, a Walther, is the appropriate response. Um, having I have I have a uh, I've owned pistols and I've taken CCR classes before, and my recollection of the education that I've gotten in gun use is you don't pull out a gun unless you're ready to use it. And in fact, much of the, the good CCR training, uh, 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 concealed carry training, uh, I may, uh, is, is to how to defuse situations, not how to um, uh, uh, and, uh, inflame them. So, uh, so that was interesting to me that their choice to inflame those situations, inflame that rather than than you know maybe you know sit on your porch, wave to the protesters, give them a bottle of water. Uh, I know other people in that neighborhood who did those things, um, and you certainly see what brandishing a weapon like that gets. And then another friend of mine, who's a lawyer in St. Louis, um, uh, not any relation to the McCloskeys, uh, was featured in a in a column this week. With Tony Messenger, his client was where the, his client uh, was treated very differently, arrested, put in jail for doing a similar thing that McCloskey did. And the, I think I think Mr. Messenger's column uh, wondered what, if people are being treated treated differently because of their race. Uh, McCloskey's white. Uh, my my friend Brett Rich, who's a good lawyer in St. Louis area, his client was, I believe, African American. So those are the issues that are raised, and those are the questions. That people have been asking me for that. Then, then the question becomes, and this is, as you know, is this Ask a Lawyer show, and I, and I, and I quoted the statute, is, is did the McCloskeys break the law? Now, I'm not a, I'm not a prosecutor, so maybe I should shut up now, but it'll be interesting to see whether they are charged. You, we know that the St. Louis uh, pro city prosecutor has been uh, very politically involved with the uh, with the Governor Greitens um, prosecution uh, and some of her positions in that, then she's been sued. Um, 
uh, and that created a lot of uh, firestorm of controversy with Mr. Greitens, uh, former Governor Greitens, who actually, I guess, is going to run for election sometime again. Um, uh, so that's, that's in the news, like in the last two weeks. It's a crazy year, as we said, as I said. So, so the, the uh, statute at issue, if you've seen it on the Internet, is Section 571.030 of Brandishing a Weapon. Uh, and it sets, says it is a crime when a person exhibits in the presence of one or more persons any weapons readily capable of lethal use in an angry or threatening manner. And the person commits the offense of unlawful use of weapons when they do that, and it's a Class E felony. So it'll be interesting whether the McCloskeys are charged under that statute or any other law. Certainly they had their weapon out. Uh, was it capable of being used in a lethal manner? Well, uh, Mrs. McCloskey had her hand finger on the trigger. Mr. McCloskey was pointing it at different places. She was pointing at different places. If it was loaded, I guess so. Uh, it was it was capable of a lethal use. Um, I don't think you brandish unloaded weapons. Certainly not at any class or any firearms training I'd ever heard of. Um, but then again, you don't pull it out and do that unless you're unless you're going to use it, and they were clearly not going to use it. Um, uh, and in an angry or threatening matter, you know that's that's for them to decide. Now, are they do they have the right to protect their property as they've been saying um, for, for, from some imminent threat? Um, uh, that's what their that's what their position is. You know, they've come out saying they're Black Lives Matter supporters and that they they had a they had a real uh, an emergent sense of a threat to them, um, but I don't know if that continued. I mean, they, these protesters kept walking and kept going down the street and then went to the mayor's house to do a peaceful protest. And um, so that's their their position, obviously. Um, I, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I'd be interested to see what, what Kim Gardner does in terms of charging them and how the, and they will certainly use that it, it, they would use a criminal charge to uh, to continue to be in the press and make this an issue. Um, I think this is different than the stand your ground laws. You know, there are you you know you have a right to protect your home from a home invasion or from a serious attack. Now I don't know about a parade next to your house as a serious attack, but that's where the lines become fudged a little bit because. There are many good people in these protests, and and marchers and families were there, and kids. Sometimes there are, there are people in those crowds that that end up uh, uh, throwing rocks or doing stuff to property, and maybe later at night they kind of do that too. More they can get they can get out of control. I didn't see evidence that this was. Um, uh, so uh, so those are just some thoughts on the criminal law. I it sounds from the letter of the statute that. Sounds to me like they they did that. Now, there's also the you know de jure versus de facto. What's in the law versus what's really done. So I don't know what the common practice in the city prosecutor's office or different prosecutor's office for prosecuting those types of crimes. There's a the city prosecutor's office is very busy, and then we weren't we wouldn't want any special treatment from the McCloskeys one way or the other.